What is up everybody, Mirrodin Gaming here, and it's time for another World of Tanks Tector Tank Showcase and Review. Today we're taking a look at the Tier 8 Russian Medium Tank, the T-44. If you've been following along in the series, you've been like, well, what happened to those two Tier 10 German TDs and the Russian Light Tanks? Well, we just had a new patch, and there's not been a lot of replays released because people are still playing Onslaught. So, it's the first tank. But we will get back to all the other ones as soon as the replays become available, or I do well enough in them to feature them. Which there's not really a good chance of that happening because I don't ace tanks very often. But anyway, let's get to the T-44. So, the Russian tanks in general tend to be fairly hull-down tanks um, with okay gun dispersion. Not really. These things are a bear to play, but this is one of the first that I really liked playing because this was the first line I went down. This thing had enough turret armor to where I could bounce quite a few rounds, and the dispersion was okay. Not great, but you could make it work, especially if you played smart. But let's go ahead and get over to that armor. So if we go to the armor view, as you can see here, this is even with the gold rounds of 247. A lot of this is you know, able to block quite a few different rounds, even off the top. Basically, you have this really small cupola and then around the gun for a lot of rounds, because a lot of stuff at this tier is going to have around 200 pin. Yeah, they're not going through your turret. Now, your hull, that's a different story. And your cupola, pretty small, so they're not, probably not going to hit it. Make sure you don't angle your turret. Have to keep it pointed straight at them, because they can go through both G. So. Anyway, let's get over the comparison. So, there's a lot of medium tanks at this tier in the tech tree that are fairly similar to play. Not great hull armor, decent turret, but it comes down to two things. Gun dispersion and speed. So gun dispersion, these are the ones that are going to be the closest. Uh, there are also a few tanks that are a little bit faster, but these are the ones I see the most that are the best comparison. At least on the North American server. Maybe different if you're on the EU server, but yeah. So, one thing I do have to mention, there are two different guns, but this is the gun I enjoyed playing the most, and this is what I see most of the high-level players using if they choose to play this tank. It's actually the Tier 7 gun, um, which has much better accuracy, much better reload, and better pin on both its standard and gold rounds. The 122 is basically a derp gun for the tank. Um, you do lose out on alpha, but honestly, even with the 217 pin, if you start seeing tier 9s and tier 10s, you're not going to be able to pin those reliably. You need that 247 in order to make the best use of your rounds. And also, another thing you have to look at, shell velocity on that bigger gun. It is not great. Well, it's okay with the gold rounds, but... Still, that 217 pin and the double how long it takes to reload is atrocious when you're trying to trade rounds. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to go with the standard gun, the 100 millimeter gun. It gives us 190 pin on our standard rounds, which isn't bad. That goes through pretty much all the tier 6s and tier 7s. Quite a few of the tier 8s, if you place your shots well. Some of the tier 9s, but tier 10s, you're going to have problems with that. You're going to have to load some of those goals for the most part. 250 Alpha, not great, not bad. Um, it's kind of right in the middle of most tanks. They some usually have somewhere around between 200 and like 320 or so for the Tech Tree tanks. So you're right there in the middle. Uh, Real time is actually pretty good at 7.9. We'll get this down with vents and probably your gun rammer. You're not going to get off two rounds to most of the other medium tanks at this tier, but you might be able to get two, two rounds off against heavy tanks. That's where you have to make use of fire to out damage them, because they will hit you for heart for more damage, but if you can trade more rounds for you know, the one big hit, you might be able to you know, pull off a win in those very tight situations. Now, shell velocity on your standard rounds pretty slow at 880, not the slowest. But, yeah, you're definitely going to have to lead, and combined with the dispersion of this tank, not great. 
if we step up to those gold rounds, which are the APCR, so we don't have to worry about little fences and stuff blocking us, 1100, which is much nicer. That's why I ended up shooting a lot more gold rounds, not just for the pin, but for the upgrade in shell velocity. Capacity of 56, which is not bad. Uh, you shouldn't run out of ammo um, in most cases. I've seen a few people, but that's pretty rare. If That's only on longer games. Typically, the games last about 5 to 7 minutes. All right, aim time 2.01. That's another reason I really like this tank. Anything around 2 or under 2 is. Of course, this is how long it takes to get down one third of the full dispersion. But still, anything around 2 is perfect. I don't even bother trying to speed up the aim time. Vents will help, but that's just a side benefit. A dispersion. That's the one thing that's a little bit difficult with this tank. It's. 0.34 is not bad, but when you're limited on your penetration, it is, because you're not going to be pinpoint accurate like some of the TDs would be. You don't have the alpha or the penetration that they do. So it works, but I, I almost feel like it should be a little bit nicer, so we're probably going to throw some improved aim. All right, then we get down to our gun depression and elevation. So elevation, pretty good at 23. That's pretty average for a lot of the tanks that have good elevation. Gun depression of 7. Even 1 degree less than the CS-53, you definitely notice this. Very hard to play on hills. You know, try to look down at tanks. You definitely have to make use of rubble, other tanks, and you know other pieces of the terrain that don't quite as much uh, elevation changes as little hills and stuff. So, definitely hard to play against these two uh, on little bridges. Down to our speed, 51. Now the good thing about this tank is, as you can see, on the hard and medium grounds, you don't lose speed. You use, lose much less than the other two on soft ground, due to power to weight ratio, 22.38. Really good. So you definitely are able to maintain speed and get to positions better than a lot of the other tech tree medium tanks. Now, there are stuff like the premium Progetto and Barask, and I can't think of the other ones. 59 Patton does pretty well as well, my current favorite premium tank right now. Um, but yeah, so you definitely can get into positions better, and that's why I like this. It's able to rotate very well and get to different positions to make best use of your mobility. All right, then we get down to our armor. Now, this is actually one of the better armored tanks for this tier for the Tech Tree tanks. Um, the hull, not so great. The Pershing, of course, outshines it a little bit. But that turret armor, as long as you can stay a hull down, 190 ends up being, with the angles, somewhere between 2 and 250. That bounces a lot of rounds, as you can see, with the penetration values on most of these standard rounds. Now, a lot of people throw gold, but it gives you a much better chance to stay alive as long don't hit your hull. 1300 health, not bad. Uh, that's pretty average for a lot of the medium tanks at this level. Actually, a little bit high compared to some. And then finally, we get down to our camo. So the camo is pretty good. Um, if you play well and try to stay double bushed, you can end up not getting spotted for the majority of the game. Um, and then the, one of the things that's a little bit lacking on this is the view range 380. If you know anything about me I like being able to spot for myself so I will definitely be trying to boost that uh, skill so what are we going to do for equipment pretty much everyone always goes Vince because it's a mobility slot that's about the only thing that you can really put there other than a turbo but this thing really doesn't need a turbo then you get down to you can have gun rammer and it's really comes down to your personal preference we can either try to make the aiming circle small. Go look at that. That brings us down to 0.31. That is sniper level uh, dispersion. You go for, you know, if you tend to move around a lot like I do, either the vertical stabilizers or the rotation mechanism. That improves your soft stats here. So as you can see, now that makes it the best with all these stats here. Very little dispersion when moving. And then my personal preference, because I tend to sit in bushes and rotate around to different bushes, was the coded optics. 
which brings our vision up to 428. So not quite max, but as soon as you start throwing stuff like that, Brothers in Arms, Recon, Situational Awareness, first we're going to throw in Snapshot, right? And eventually Concealment. It's going to be like the last skill you get. If you look, what's that going to do for us? So that's going to get us down to 0.32. Our reload time of 6.16. Our camouflage of 25, which is really good. Stationary camo of 33, which basically means if you're double bushed, you're going to be max camo. Someone's using CVS, of course, that brings it down a little bit. But if someone is not running CVS, they're practically going to have to run into you pushed. Very good use of it. That uh, little bit of camo that you can get with the concealment, and then it maxes out our view range. Actually, a little bit more than maxes out our view range. So it allows us to spot for ourselves, spot for the enemies, expect, or spot for our teammates towards the end of the battle. The light tanks are dead because they tend to die pretty early, in my experience. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get over to the gameplay. All right, so we are going to be watching Doctor Wax or Doctor Wax in their T44 on Runeberg. Here we go. Now it's an ace tanker gameplay. Ooh, he's got a lot of bounty equipment. And it's fully upgraded. So, And as you can see here by the uh, looking at the barrel of the gun, he is using that 100 millimeter. The 122 has a muzzle brake on it, so it's really easy to tell just by looking at it. Typically, if there's more than one version of a barrel you can eat you can usually tell either by the length of the barrel the size of the barrel like the circumference of it or if it has a muzzle break or not oh interesting choice of locations here this is actually one of my favorite positions for playing as a TD that's a little bit taller is yep right there and of course that guy's gonna block his shot there you go got him once Look, he's got a good enough camera that he's not going to get spotted here. Yeah, that's the thing. This is a little bit far enough back. As long as they don't have good view range because of that bush there, they're not going to spot him. Look at that. Already three shots in. Yeah, see, the thing is that Tiger, as soon as he fires, he's going to get spotted. Got unlucky with the dispersion on that round. And as you can see, he's actually put it to where his gold rounds are his first round. I'm gonna snap all these little shots in here as long as these guys keep trying to poke. Yeah, this is a really good position. Most people play where that Hellcat was. But I found as long as you've got enough of... If, as long as you're tall enough, this is actually a much better position to counter those guys up on that, and then if everybody's try to push around. Nice. Yep, see that's the, that's the dispersion. This gun is a little bit trolly. Actually, most of the Russian tank is a little bit trolly. Backed off. Pretty well here, already up to 1400 damage. Oh, oh, here comes something. Oh, got wise. Oh, maybe I don't want to poke there. Yeah, you can do a lot of damage from this position. Oh, and another thing to note. He's hull down. It's going to be very hard for them to penetrate from this location just because he's not really exposing much. Just basically exposing the upper right portion. The only thing you really have to worry about is artillery, but it's very hard for them to sneak shots through try to snap one. Very hard for them to sneak shots through the, the gap where they're sitting. Yep, now the uh Yeah the the alpha on, or not the alpha, sigma on this gun is a little bit off. 
which is um, basically to say you have your dispersion value and then you also have what's called the sigma and that is how much it moves or how much of a deviation it's going to have from the center of your reticle and some tanks are better typically Russian tanks actually tend to pretty good that but you can see like 252 use and defender snapping shots from distances they shouldn't be it's like the percentage chance of it being directly on all right so he's going to rotate out because it looks like the little city has fallen they are already down five tanks not a good uh, start so far for his team see if he can clean these guys still at full health see if he can help this Cromwell here up here put a few rounds into these guys hopefully oh when the Cromwell is gone making good use of the zoom to tell exactly where these enemy tanks are Cromwell just sitting there Hanging him, like, where were you? I was doing damage. Finish off the one shot. Get into a position to protect yourself. Okay, now the Cromwell is just being gone. The Cromwell should have retreated way before those other guys fell. Okay, yeah, look at that. Already, two more kills. Side scraping to avoid a shot. Getting into position. I hate players that do that. Sit there and ping for the rest of the game. Made a stupid play. Not my fault. I would have blocked it. Blocked him at this point. Blacklisted him. Go down here, see if you can get this comment. Or zero. Nicely done. Five kills. Now they're only down two tanks. Look how much he turned that around rather quickly. All that Cromwell's going to do is just ping him the rest of the game. Trying to be annoying. Going to flank. You see, this is where that mobility comes into play. Yeah, you can actually get someone chat banned for doing that. You just report them for inappropriate whatever in chat. I can't think of what the term is. Inappropriate behavior in chat. If they keep pinging, 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 chat ban. So they can't do that. Alright. Round, and now it's down to him and bro. The question is, can he finish these guys off by himself? He can spot them. The Giro, of course, has shots down that line. Oh, hit. Back on that first round. In the second. That just doesn't have quite the gun depression. Or, I mean, quite the... Uh, Send this version to hit him. The Gunders gonna sit here and click all the rest of the game. Should have just gone to the garage. He knows where T29 is, so he's got a little bit of time before the T29 can make. Trying to get into a different position. Where a32 40 100 damage a thousand blocked five kills run away yep making good use of his mobility, better positioning.
Now we know that there's at least two in the cap circle. Tag oh. Snap that shot in before. Got. Oh, oh, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. He's got enough. I'm trying to track him there. Stay ahead of him, stay ahead of him. Nice. Well played there. This is true ace tanker gameplay. We've had a few where it's just questionable as to well, how good you know the ace tanker gameplay was, but this dude knows. Go to letting him know that the T29 is a one shot. Now you just gotta find him. Thankfully, that he can take a couple shots from the T29 and boom, gone. Wow. That is how you do that. Did you see that? 11 kills out of 15 players. Now, some of those were clean up, but still. All right, let's go ahead and get over to the end game stats. All right, so A Stanker, Fire for Effect, Duelist, Bruiser, Fool's Metal, and a Eagles up at least tier 5 enemy vehicles. It doesn't say. It's, it's like you have to destroy at least eight or something. Like that. High caliber, top gun, and tank sniper. Yeah, now see if if the um, hero had died a little bit earlier and it was the five on one, that would be I can't remember which metal is, but that's the one that everyone tries to get. The five versus one. But yeah, that is definitely how you play this tank. Make use of your mobility. Make use of any rounds did you have and just lay waste to the enemy so we had a total of 5,616 damage 11 kills quite a few crit hits and blocked a thousand damage oh yeah anyway this is Verity Gaming don't forget to uh, favorite or comment on which tank you want to see next if it's not in the lineup uh, because I'm going to go back through all those light tanks and tier 10 mediums, or tier 10 E's, not mediums, for the Germans. And anyway, this is Meredith Gaming. I'll see you on the battlefield.